Might talk about femoral neck lengthening or morsel osteotomy. There are few procedures that are pretty, pretty predictable and I will say good results. Most of my motion I am pretty satisfied with achieved results. Uh, I learned it from uh, Noam Bohr. Noam was first in the country who did it. But our first case, we stuck in a 15 year old uh, boy from Ethiopia. We stuck for almost uh, one hour. It was impossible to remove the blade plate uh, because of the, some surgical errors. So I will, I will explain later. So in 1980, Erwin Morsher presented femoral neck lengthening, and the goal of the surgery was restoration of normal anatomy of proximal femur. Morsher is an orthopedic surgeon from a Basel, was very famous, uh, and this is schematic representation of the, of the procedure. It was published first time in a journal Pediatric Orthopedics B. Actually, it's about coxa breva. And what is coxa breva? Except of short femoral neck, we have overgrowth of the greater trochanter because trochanter is not affected by a vascular necrosis of the femoral head. Usually, the patient had some limb shortening. If you have AVN of the proximal physis, remember, if you start dispertus disease at age seven, the proximal physis grows, it's approximately 0 0.3 millimeter per year. Not surprisingly that you will have two and a half uh, centimeter leg length discrepancy at the maturity. So there are common etiologies of coxa breva. What is common for all of them is premature closure of the epiphyseal plate. And shortly about hip biomechanics, we have reduction of lever arm of hip abductors. We have a reduction of abductor muscle tension. And because of the overgrowth of the greater trochanter, we have impingement in abduction. So it's external impingement. Clinically, a patient has some limp because of Trendelenburg have muscle fatigue, reduction of uh, range of motion, and of course, as I said, leg length discrepancy secondary to, to premature closure of the epiphyseal plate. The surgical principles of femoral neck lengthening the lateralization of the femoral shaft, the longer double osteotomy of the proximal femur, lengthening of the femoral neck, and lengthening of the limb due to obliquity of the osteotomy. How much lengthening you can achieve? Approximately 12 millimeter. Uh, the top is uh, one and a half. And this is, I, I received from Noam, this was original description of the martial osteotomy in a German literature. All my five cases, it was against my eyes in, I had no office that time, but uh, against my computer, this picture, how to do Morsher osteotomy. Look at the position of the wire. Because we are using 130 degrees blade plate, it should be 50 degrees along the shaft of the proximal femur. This is the description. Our first blade plates were non-cannulated. Now it's much easier to perform. And the key point of the whole procedure, people don't understand it, it's accurate placement of the first Kirchner wire. It should create exact, precise next shaft angle 130 degrees, and it should be also ideally in position of the antiversion. So we are using two parallel Kirchner wires above the first wire, and this what I what I call moving fragment. It refers to bone fragment between two proximal. Uh, it's not osteotomy. It's two proximal wires. So we introduce the chisel. Additional K wire should be inserted just above the lesser trochanter to mark the third osteotomy. And then you have to create tunnel. Don't bother yourself. It's a very, uh, very beautiful on the picture. But in real life, 99% that you will uh, crack this fragment and use it like a bone graft. Uh, additionally, 
to the osteotomy. This is not on the, on the plate, it's, a, it's a just a bone graft. So plate is driven through the femoral neck into the femoral head and under lateral traction and abduction, the plate is fixated to the shaft. Grated trochanter can be fixed by screw to the femoral neck. Initially, we are using like a mortar on the tangent bent wire. I learned from the pellet to put additionally some screw. Very useful, but remember, there is no uh, much rooms between blade plate and the uh, femoral neck. You should be either lateral or medial to the um, blade plate. So to those who didn't catch how to perform the osteotomy, I'll do it again. It's premature closure, uh, post-traumatic uh, gross arrest, short femoral neck, pretty obese patient, this is the incision. Uh, remember, you should hold this triangle. It uh, represents 50 degrees along the shaft. So you insert the wire. It should be ideally on both AP and the axial view. When you have this position of both wires, you can go. It sometimes takes 20, 25 minutes in order to be perfect, but it's really, really crucial for success of the whole operation. So now you can uh, insert chisel. This is orthopediatrics uh, plate. Similar have Smith and nephew. We are using orthopediatric. They are close to us. Uh, so this is the removal of the moving fragment. So now you can translate the osteotomy. And this is the end of the procedure. We published it with Noah, and I took also two cases from Loma Linda from Scott in Journal of Pediatric Orthopedics in 2016. You can, uh, you can read the, the paper. It's, it's, uh, I think it's free in the PubMed. So we had 18 patients, 20 hips. The older follow-up was of Noah. We had mean follow-up of 13.6 years with a range from 4 to 21. Of course, the 21 of known patients. Majority of patients were uh, after Pertus disease. And we raised uh, Harris skip score for 10 uh, points. Uh, majority of the patient disappeared in Dillenburg. We had three fails. Of course, it's older patients. And it was, in all three fails, it was incongruent hip joints, which for me, it's clear now that it's contraindication to moisture osteotomy. You, can, you cannot perform moisture osteotomy in the presence of osteoarthritis. We had one blade migration. My first, my first patient that I did with Noam here in Rambam we had two wire breakage. This was my, my first, uh, first case without no. So this is a 13 year old girl, status post bilateral Pertus disease. When she was six, I performed a bilateral Salter osteotomy. Never will do Salter osteotomy for Pertus again, but that's the history, you cannot remove it. So she had severe whirling gates, not surprising. Can look at the look at the X-rays, and this was first operation. Year after, I decided I'll do the second. We had no no no. I, I forget to order the, the from synthesis the the blade plate, so I removed this plate. I put on the other side. So this is the <laughs> this is the <laughs> this is the <laughs> the same plate <laughs> on the left side. Uh, it was pretty good. So here are X-rays at age 24, 11 years after, and she completed. This is the girl, and she completed army service. I ask her, what's your profile? 97. 97 is the highest. So she didn't tell to, that she has any operation. Normal life, she's now, now 28, two kids, 
absolutely normal life, and despite some displeasure, she has uh, not in Delenburg really, really excellent result. So this is known patients. It's 60-year-old boy, status pertus. I think this, this is the longest follow-up, six months post-op. You, you know what? We should remove the, the circulation. Okay, it's always broke uh, on the follow-up. This is 15-year post-op, uh, range of motion. And this is uh, the patient that I, I will never, uh, I will remember uh, until my death. She, I started to treat her when she was five years old. She had a post-septic uh, premature uh, growth arrest. Uh, we did lengthening three times, and uh, that was the hip at the end. So I decided I perform motion osteotomy. We also gained some length from the motion osteotomy. This was the end. And she's a nurse in our surgery department all the time when I should reassure somebody that uh, they can do some lengthening. We did 14 and a half. 14 and a half. What? 14 and a half uh, centimeter lengthening over the time. Uh, this is the story. So in conclusion, more share developed femoral neck lengthening for deformity correction of neck length, leg length discrepancy and abduction tension. Our results pretty similar what what uh, was in the first and the second uh, paper of the Morsher. What we believe that this operation requires meticulous preoperative planning and execution. It's contraindicating presence of the hip joint incongruence. Uh, we have pretty satisfactory long-term uh, results, and this is my CT by night. Thank you.